I am now protected from bad cold with my hard hat. This bowl is so hard to... So in a previous video, we mentioned the top three smart contract developer platforms, namely Brownie, Truffle, and Hardhat. We already went over using Brownie because I love Brownie and I love Python, but we haven't talked about Truffle or Hardhat at all yet. So in this video, we're gonna go over deploying with Hardhat, why it's such a cool framework in the first place, and I'll probably make a bunch more Hardhat jokes. It's not very funny, but I'm gonna stick with it. All right, so first off, right off the bat, one of the best pieces about Hardhat is that the documentation is lit AF. And if you head on over to the Discord, there are people there who will give you a hand. So support's fantastic, docs are awesome. Uh, this is probably one of the cleanest documentations I've seen. I was able to literally walk through this and get through everything I wanted to get through just by reading the documentation. And that's what you like to see. So if anything, if anything you take away from this video is just that Hardhat is sick and you should try it out. If you hate videos, if you don't even want to watch me code or anything, go to the documentation, follow it along. If you run into questions, pop into my Discord or pop into the Hardhead Discord, you'll get some help. Somebody will help you out. Or Google it. There's a good chance the question has already been asked. So the first thing we want to do in order to work with Hardhat is install it. So um, you'll need NPM. You'll need NPM and Node.js installed. So if you don't have that, install that. Um, there's a link in the description to help you get installed there. But then you just run it normally. NPM install Hardhat. I'm just going to do save dev here. NPM install, save dev, hard hat. So that's the first step. Uh, you can use yarn, you can use whatever package manager you want. And then we'll be able to run commands with MPX hard hat. And there's also a shortcut that they added recently, shortcut and autocomplete, which is really, really handy. Um, so you, instead of doing things with um, MPX, you can just use hard hat, HH, uh, which is really nice. It'll take a few minutes to install. And while it does, I'm gonna put this bowl on my head to protect myself from JavaScript Dear hard hat bowl on my head, please don't let JavaScript do anything weird to me during this tutorial. Thank you. So now that we got it in here, we can run MPX hard hat and it'll give us this awesome command line interface where it's got this super cute hard hat thing that pops up and it says, what do you want to do? Create a sample hard hat project, create an empty hard hat project or screw that noise. Well, we're actually going to not screw that noise. We're going to create a sample project and we're going to put it here and just hit enter a whole bunch. Do you want to install the projects? Yep, sure. It's going to install some of the uh, products dependencies here for us and we're going to get a, a sample uh, spun up. Now we're going to talk about the fires and folders and what they actually do here. But because we're working in JavaScript, you can probably go watch a movie while your stuff installs. Boom! And once it's all done, it'll give you a couple of commands that you can run to test things. But we're just going to run npx hard hat to see what kind of commands we get. So these are going to be our basic commands here. Accounts which will print the accounts. Uh, this can check whatever you need. We can clean, we can compile, we can do pretty much everything that we want to do. Now let's talk about the folders that could get created over in the top left here. So contracts is obviously going to be where your solidity contracts are going to go. This is where when you compile your contracts, it's going to look so we can even run npx hard hat compile. And it's going to look in this contracts folder and it's going to grab this greeter and it's going to compile it and we're going to see the compiled code actually go into a different folder called artifacts. So don't worry about cache. You can basically ignore cache. So artifacts is where all the compiled contracts go. If we look in here real quick, we can see a couple different folders. You won't spend a whole lot of time in here, but what something that is important or, or, or nice to know at least is that in this greeter.json that got compiled, it has the ABI the contract information and uh, it, it's a nice place to reference to see where some of your contracts have already been deployed to. We can see that in build info as well. So that's what happens when we compile. We have our node modules, which is obviously where our JavaScript packages live. We have scripts where we can do similar to our other languages. We can run a script, which is we can run something against our smart contracts and, and do something a little bit more unique. And then our test folder, obviously, which is where we're going to put our tests for the whole package. Git ignore, obviously for Git, package and package lock for our JavaScript packages, and hardhat.config.js. This is where a lot of the really important metrics for your project are going to be. So um, at the top, we have require hardhat waffle, and we have this additional thing that you probably haven't seen if you've worked with other smart contract development frameworks is a task. So we can actually run tasks right from the command line with mpx hardhat accounts. And what this is gonna do is just going to print a list of accounts. These are the list of accounts on the hard hat network, which I'll talk about in a second. And you'll see kind of the typical stuff in here, uh, the solidity version, you could add network information in here, but this is where a lot of the information about your project is going to be stored. Similarly, to, to run our tests, we can run npm hard hat tests, and this will run everything in here. Awesome. 
Now you'll see to run these tests, I didn't have to spin up a Ganache server or anything like that. Hardhat will use something called the Hardhat network. This is a built-in feature which will allow you to test against a fake blockchain that is built in with the Hardhat package. So we can even run a Hardhat network node with MPX Hardhat node. And this will spin up a node that we can work with and play with. We get the accounts and the private keys to uh, be a little bit more specific with it. So this is a fantastic tool that runs really fast and is great for testing our smart contracts. So we're going to quit out for now. But no, whenever we run our tests, it actually spins this up on the back end, runs it against that blockchain, and then tears it down. So this is this fake blockchain that's running in the background that makes it really easy for us to test our smart contracts. Now, something that's really important to me is being able to run against a realistic blockchain, but obviously not spend any real gas to do that. So Hardhead has this tool called forking, which allows us to fork the mainnet Ethereum to run on our, our hard hat network on our fake blockchain, but with mainnet contracts. This is an incredibly powerful feature, one of my favorite features of hard hat. If we want to run some tests using forking, we can just come into our configuration here. We can add some networks information, and the default network when you run MPX hard hat test actually is hard hat. We can change our network doing network coven or whatever is defined in this configuration. We only have hard hat in here. But what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite hard hat by adding this forking keyword and adding a URL in here. So I have mine set as an environment variable and I'm using alchemy. So um, alchemy is another um, Infura like application and Fura gives you an RPC URL alchemy. Alchemy is another one. They're both really good. They both do exactly what you need them to do. So I'm just using Alchemy because I wanted to mix it up a little bit. Now we can run MPX Hard Hat test and you'll see you're running a network fork starting from the latest block. Performance made a grade due to fetching data from the network with each run. If connected to an archival node, we strongly recommend setting block number to a fixed value to increase performance with a local cache. So instead of doing it on our, block, on our own local blockchain, on our own new blockchain, we actually spin up a new blockchain that's a fork of mainnet Ethereum, which is really powerful and really cool and we run our tests there. So this is a incredibly powerful feature that we'll use more and more, and it's especially helpful for someone like me who, who needs to run against mainnet. Something else insane about Hardhead is they have this console.log feature. So we already have it in here, um, but if you want to be able to write to the command line, right through your smart contract, you just import this hardhat console.log and you run this console.log deploying a greeter with greeting. So we saw when we tested our smart contract, it actually printed these out. Those print line statements came from the solidity code, not from our JavaScript code. You can write a console.log right in your smart contract and figure out what a variable is. Now, I personally prefer to use debuggers, but hardhat's got your back here. Hardhat has something called a shorthand and an autocomplete. So I've already installed it, so I'm not going to run this. But again, you just run this on your command line. And then what you can do is you can come in here and just do HH test. So instead of MPX hard hat test, HH test. I know it's not really that much of an efficiency saver, but it's nice and I like it. Now let's put it all together into a simple chain link dApp. Now the forking feature is of particular importance to using something like Chainlink because with Chainlink, we're constantly connecting to Chainlink price feeds, which have specific contracts that we need to work with. They're going to be different on mainnet, on Coven, on Rinkby, on each network. So when we're testing, we want to be sure we're testing that specific network. So the fantastic part about this is in my Solidity code, if I want to hardcore a contract address like a mainnet price feed contract address, I can go ahead and do that. And then in my configuration, I just mentioned when I'm working with my default network, Hardhat, when I'm working with this Hardhat network, I'm going to be forking from mainnet. And it allows me to test deploying my smart contracts as if I was working on the mainnet, which is incredibly powerful. So this is a really simple repo for deploying Chainlink smart contracts with price feeds. If you don't, if you haven't checked out price feeds or don't know how to work with price feeds, there's a link in the description as well for those. It's an incredibly powerful Oracle feature to get price into data and securing like half of DeFi or something like that. So you can build some really powerful features with it and being able to fork from mainnet so I can test on that is incredibly important and incredibly powerful. So I know I spoke pretty quickly here, but Hardhat really is one of the easier interfaces to work with. If you do run into questions, if you do run into issues, there's a link in the description for the Alpha Chain Discord. There's also a link in the description for the Hardhat Discord. Both are great places to get questions. And as always, we want to promote an open source community. So if you have a question and somebody else hasn't asked it and there's no information online about it, ask a Stack Overflow question, ask a Stack Exchange question so that it can be out there so that the next time somebody else runs into it, they can Google it and they can find it and it's because you helped them out. So that's all for now. I hope you take the protective tips. I hope your head, I hope your hard hat. 
I hope you have a hat.